Uh, Governor, it's so great to see you. Uh, I want to start just with politics. So many things I want to ask you about, but Pennsylvania is one of the swing states where Correct. Donald Trump is leading. And I think we're all trying to figure out why. Yeah, look, I mean, I wouldn't pay a whole lot of attention to the polling at this point. Um, and that poll certainly isn't gospel. I've seen a lot of polls all over the place. I think we have to acknowledge that there's real worry out there here in Pennsylvania and across this country. Worry about the economy, worry about immigration, worry about crime. But I think it's also really critical to note that we're at the beginning of this campaign. We've got a year to go. This race is gonna join, mm -hmm. and you're gonna see a clear contrast between the President of the United States, who here in Pennsylvania has delivered. He's delivered on roads and bridges, on high-speed internet, on two hydrogen hubs. They're gonna help bring about a clean energy future here in the Commonwealth and across the country. He's protected our freedoms and he stabilized our democracy. On the other side of this very clear contrast in this race, you've got the former president that just so discord and disconnect in the public, someone who's just brought total chaos to the United States. And you're seeing it play out in a courtroom right now, a, a guy who's focused more on himself uh, and his own fraudulent ways and less on benefiting the American people. We're going to have a clear contrast in this race. And as you pointed out at the beginning, it's it's the poll about a year from now that matters most. Mm -hmm. We've got a long way to go, a clear contrast in this race. And uh, in President Biden, we've got a guy who's delivered for Pennsylvania, and I'll be proud to be campaigning for him and supporting him here in the Commonwealth and across the country. So you referenced it, the former president in the courtroom. I, I know I'm not going to ask you about the specifics of the fraud case. You have plenty on your plate. But broadly speaking, you're a former state attorney general yourself. Why is it important for fraudulent behavior like this to be called out and to be prosecuted? You know, when I was attorney general, we always talked about putting the people before the powerful. You know, the powerful are always able to cut corners, make deals for themselves, and screw over the little guy. And Donald Trump has spent a career doing that in business and then during his four years as president of the United States. I think what's playing out in these this courtroom and in other courtrooms across the country in the future um, shows a, a clear picture that the former president is for himself. He's not for anybody else. And the kind of chaos that we're seeing surround him is not something I think the American people want to invite back into the White House, invite back into their living rooms every day. I think we need to move forward in this country, not backwards. And I think Joe Biden and the work that he has done has made clear he puts the American people first. Now, to be clear, there's a lot of worry out there. There's a lot of concern. There's a lot of need. There's a lot of heartbreak. And I think the, the president of the United States is doing his best to address those challenges. But the idea that we're going to go back to Donald Trump um, and somehow that that's going to be correction for this country is is absolutely not the direction I think this nation will head in once they see the clear contrast in this race as it gets put together. And one of those contrasts, Governor, is, is rule of law, which I know you have a great deal of respect and value for, given your history. There's new reporting from The Washington Post that basically says Trump and his allies have begun mapping out specific plans for using the federal government to punish critics and opponents should he win a second term. I've read the story so many times and I can't stop thinking about it. But what is your reaction to that yeah. suggestion and even to that piece? First off, Jen, I, I believe it. And second, it should scare the hell out of every American. Mm -hmm. um, the, the fact that this guy is going to be completely unmoored if he's given the keys to the White House again, a guy who's going to be driving down the road with no yellow line, no guardrails, nothing to hold him back or nothing to hold him in the center, that should scare the hell out of everyone. The, the idea that he's got an enemies list and that he wants to take it out on them, again, it's more of the same. He's focused on his own grievances, his own mm. interests, his own selfishness, not focused on helping the American people, not building a single road, not repairing a bridge. You know, you covered when 95 went down and we rebuilt that road in 12 yeah. days. We did that with the partnership of President Joe Biden, who cared deeply about the good people of Pennsylvania and the folks along the East Coast who traveled on that road. The former president doesn't care at all about them. He cares about himself. And we should all be deeply concerned about his efforts to undermine the rule of law when he was president. And God forbid if he gets the chance to do that again. 
Before I let you go, Governor, I know you're busy. I do want to ask you about the war between Israel and Hamas and, and, and the impact here at home. You've been so outspoken about anti-Semitism, sure. and I know you've been dealing with this in your state. There, there's unquestionably a great deal of anger and outrage at the number of civilian casualties and the lack of humanitarian assistance that has not yet made mm -hmm. its way to Gaza. There's also been some statements made that include language that have deep roots in history. And, and recently, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib has, has referenced and defended the phrase from the river to the sea. Uh, what would you want the Congresswoman to know, or really anyone who's using that phrase or retweeting it, about how any member of the Jewish community in this country or anywhere in the world hears that phrase? I guess what I'd say is this, this deeply troubling moment that we're living through in the Middle East right now uh, should not be used by anyone uh, as a justification for their anti-Semitism, nor should it be used as an excuse for hate or Islamophobia or anti-Arab sentiment. I think it's critically important that we speak and act with moral clarity right now. That goes for the Congresswoman and everyone else. Look, there is no moral equivalency between Hamas, a designated terrorist organization it's designated by the United States, and Israel, a pluralistic democracy. Hamas, in an unprovoked attack, killed over a thousand uh, multinationals, including the vast majority uh, Israelis. They took over 200 people hostage, including Americans. Israel should not have to live next to that terrorist organization. And they have every right to defend themselves and rid that region of those terrorists. Now, we need to do everything we can uh, to save innocent lives. And I condemn the loss of all innocent lives. But we have to be very clear on our college campuses or even in the halls of Congress to not use this moment as any sort of justification for anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, or any other forms of hate. The Congresswoman should know better. Others should know better. They should study their history. They should understand what has led to this, and they should understand what is clearly wrong, Hamas, a terrorist organization, and what is right, Israel's right to defend itself.